Hello friends, it is turn 40. I have been at this for weeks. I am very, very tired, but I am back in the game. We've had a bit of good luck this week. There's been a bit more uh, capturing of provinces and recapturing of provinces as we slowly take back a territory that was reseeded to us by uh, this bastard here who ended his ended his NAP and went to war with me based on hearsay and then ostensibly felt bad about it, but we all know really it was because he became threatened by other players and couldn't afford to spend the time it would take to finish killing me. This is bad luck. Uh, in the turn we were going to march in and take that, pro well the turn before we were, go we were going to march in and take that province, it has been taken by a neutral uprising, but my uh, my forces should be able to deal with this just fine. We've got yet another throne being claimed, and we have had a little bit of actual good luck for once. We have had our second hero arrive, and this guy is amazing as well. Here he is. So this guy is a Nifulyal, which is, I believe, one of the endgame units that you can get as Niflheim, requiring you to have cast a global spell first, and then summoning spells to summon them that have the global as a, a prerequisite. Three air, three water, three death. This is great. This is a second air caster and second access to the air tree. So I'm going to have him spend a few turns sight searching so that we can get a bit more air income first. And then he'll probably be doing important war things because he's a very skillful general as well as a powerful spell caster and a powerful priest. This guy can do all of the things. Get you a guy who does like four things. <laughs> In addition to that, we are mostly just retaking provinces this turn. I am feeling antsy about this. I should be able to get a big enough uh, communion stack going fairly soon that I can threaten this terrifying thing. 270 units, including an absolute fuck ton of his powerful knights. He's also got a lot of longbowmen, but we don't need to worry about them very much. Depending on how timing works out, I might be able to send one of my air casters with that force, which means that I can cast spells that just completely fuck up arrow usage. <laughs> There's a word for that. Don't ask me what it is. We've also got blood searchers starting to search in a few different provinces, and we've got some logistical shuffling around, and we have re-begun re production in a few places. At the moment, I am kind of focusing on uh, trying to get as many Veti frontliners available. I'm also summoning in a few places a few, um, a few summoned units on the grounds that this will let me have patrollers who can search for assassins that won't cost me upkeep to have them sitting around doing nothing. Most people use summoned units for patrollers simply because you can't afford to have military forces standing around and not doing anything because they cost money the entire time they exist. Summoned units don't cost any upkeep money, therefore they're useful for whoever you want to be um, patrolling for assassins and so on. So I'd like to get a patrol force set up in each of my major, major groups and maybe a couple wandering around looking for stuff, especially since this bastard made it clear that he's keeping his assassins in my provinces to try and keep me on the straight and narrow. Which, you know, fuck it, that's a bunch of resources he's not spending somewhere else. That will be detrimental to him in the long run. Funny I should mention him, actually. So, during the uh, during this turn, he messaged me saying that he actually really wanted this province for one turn longer and asking me politely to not take it back this turn. I said, well, why? And he said, I'm not telling you, which I don't think you need me to tell you is incredibly sus. Uh, we talked about it for a while and went back and forth, and basically he, he kept promising deeper and deeper into the it's not about you kind of line of things to say. You know, I promise you that this will not harm any of your provinces. Okay, well, it, will it harm the provinces that are that you've agreed will be mine, but that I haven't retaken yet? No, not that either, and so on and so on and so on. But he just refused constantly to tell me what it was. So I thought, well, let's have a look at the map. Here's Marignol. Here's Pangaea. If he wanted this t this tile to gain access for access to another player, well, Marignol he has plenty of access to from his own territory already, so he doesn't need to get me to leave this here so he can step out of his own way. In terms of access to my territory, it's incredibly suspicious that he would want it left open for one extra turn just to try and squeeze some stuff into my territory. If he's sneaking stuff into my territory in order to try and flip tiles again later, well, first off, he wouldn't have let me take my territory back if that was his plan, since it clearly means that he needs those troops elsewhere, otherwise he just wouldn't have given me the territory back. And if he's sneaking troops through my territory in order to attack someone else, such as over here, which was my initial thought, he doesn't need this tile to be his territory. If his troops are stealthed anyway, then they can just pass through my territory with no issue. Which means that whatever he's doing must be detrimental to me in some way, otherwise I'm sure he would just tell me. The most obvious conclusion is that he wants to take this province, which is detrimental to me on the grounds that it's, you know, a throne near me that hasn't been claimed yet, the only one as such, because I've been really slow in this game and, you know, unfortunately got locked into a war 
which was entirely my own fault, let's be real, a bit later than was sensible. I should have been, I should have gone to war sooner. I should have finished that war sooner. And then I should have maybe even just focused on taking those two provinces a bit faster. But if he wants to attack this, why does he need to come from here? He already moved the army he had here away, which means he's taking something new there. And this is Marignan and this is me. So something must be going into it and then out of it again. I've got no idea what he's doing and it's really bothering me. He offered me 10 gems in exchange for leaving it open. Um, I told him, give me 50 gems and then I'll happily leave it open for you. And he said, well, I don't want it that much. It'll only make what I'm doing happen slower, not immediately. So presumably I'll see what it is eventually. My money is still on this because it's the only thing I can think of, but who really knows at this point. And that is all I have to talk about today in this episode of Geopolitical Cosmic Wizard Wars. Well, things are still going okay, so let's have a quick look at our messages from today. Summoning's going okay, blood slaves are going okay. This is concerning, because I suspect that means that he was abducted by Pangaea. But uh, if I ask if it was him, I think he'll just deny it. There's been a few more retaking of provinces, including him retaking one of mine, which I f kind of forgot was counted in the provinces he would be retaking, which means he'll have a castle right next to my castle, which is somewhat uncomfortable. But I mean, it's better than being knocked out of the game. So I mean, it sucks to be you guys, but, um, but you know, what are they for if not to die beautifully for Mother Jotunheim? Also, uh, huh, we seem to have a pro pro proclamation from us. Van Druva the Verti Hag shall hereby be known as the Prophet of Short King, the Mighty One, Words of Power, the Self-Manifested Master. Um, excuse me? Like, good initiative, but nobody told you to do that. This is this is a setting where your god is quite literally real and can hurt you. Under those circumstances, I don't think declaring yourself to be a prophet is entirely reasonable. That should be my decision. I am literally your god. I wonder if it automatically does that if you leave it too long without declaring a prophet, or if I simply fucked up and misclicked while telling this person to research. Anyway, so today you can see we have a complicated spiderweb of orders going off all at once. This is mostly logistical. I'm shuffling a bunch of troops around to get enough in my capital that I can build a doom stack with a lovely juicy four Scrati communion to try and challenge this thing, which I'm worried is heading straight towards my capital because goddamn, look at the size of it. I'm not going to try and link up my secondary army. That's going to loop around the back and try and take this province while he's busy trying to fight my capital. But that does mean that I need to send all of these Scrati I was intending to use as thugs back home so they can be turned into batteries, including this guy. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I guess I could keep one of them as a thug and have four as a battery, one casting Grip of Winter. This uh, this battery is still going fine. They'll be able to do lots of problems around here in, in man's back line. There's not a ton else to say, really, except that we do have our very first Yaren Vidya now, which are our strongest spellcasters, although they do start with old age, which can cause problems. Well, I mean, they don't start with old age, but they start old. <laughs> Uh, the, I think the age number might be randomized. I can't remember and I can't be bothered to look it up right now because I'm very sleepy. Still, this means we have a nature, th a natively nature three caster now, which means that we can cast certain spells more easily and we essentially gain access to a whole new tier of, of summoning spells in here. Not that we mostly want to do that. Most of the summons in the game are kind of a trap. They're kind of a waste of, of gems. Almost all of them aren't worth the combat utility per gem spent on them. There are a few combat creatures that are actually quite useful, but otherwise, generally speaking, if you're summoning stuff, you want to be summoning spellcasters, because once you reach a certain point, you can summon spellcasters, which is a great way to round out your nation's abilities. So that's one of the reasons why I'm saving up earth gems, because I would quite like um, another earth caster, which means that I need my, my leader to try and summon something, which might take some effort, I'm not sure. He might need some booster items, which is one of the reasons why I am, in fact, currently researching construction. Because if he can get enough boosts to earth power, then he can summon a troll king, which is a powerful earth caster, and then that troll king can summon other troll kings or search for earth sites or whatever. Just expanding your access to spells is always really useful, and we don't have any native earth. It's especially useful considering that Earth has some of the best buffs in the game. The two other games of this that I have played hinged pretty heavily on me uh, gaining access to and using a combination of buffs that massively increased my troops' armor, massively increased their damage, and then potentially later on also gave them armor piercing. With Strength of Giants, Legions of Steel, you can basically win a, a, you can win a, any early game fight 
if you have the infantry to support it. I'm also scooting these guys back out of the province they're in into the capital, not just so that I have more guys in my capital to do stuff with, but also so that um, in case this gigantic glob of units happens to travel into this province, it won't be a problem. If he's heading to my capital, that's where he's going to go. I'm hoping to get enough stuff into my capital that I can prepare to fend these guys off, which I should be able to do with my big communions, provided I can get everybody there in the first place. I'm also shuffling some site searchers around a bit further. Also, I have begun assigning my summoned units to recruited independent generals so that they can do some patrolling and try and see if there's any any sneaky, sneaky motherfuckers still sneaking around in my capitals. And I think that that is everything we need to do today. The efforts to kick man out of my territory continues. We've summoned a shit ton of wolves all over the place for patrolling and also potentially castle defense purposes. This guy has cast a global spell that I believe provides a bunch of fire gems every turn. It's one of the easier gem providing globals to cast, which is unsurprising considering that fire gems are considered generally to be one of the least useful gem types. We've retaken a few more provinces and we've also been able to see exactly what this group of man happens to have. Unfortunately, I didn't get that Vetihag out in time. So that brings us to the actual battle map. So I have two immediate problems to deal with. One is this very obvious doom stack over here. 450 enemy units, roughly, although that could be plus or minus as much as 50 to 100. Mainly Longbowmen, Knights of Avalon, Wardens of Avalon, Landless Knights, and Mothers of Avalon. Now, I believe Knights of Avalon are not his sacred cavalry. So he is apparently not using his r bless as a uh, fundamental component of his strategy to rely on here. However, that many knights will fuck anybody up, and that many cro uh, longbowmen will fuck anybody up. They're one of the only useful archer types in the game. Almost nobody bothers with archers except for man. However, we now have two different casters who are capable of casting a spell that prevents arrows from doing basically anything. So we should be able to fuck this army up right good with a decent stack, which is what this complicated spiderweb of commands is going to let us do. I'm reorganizing a bunch of my troops. I'm moving a couple of Gigias to this side fort and a few Gigias from here to the capital. I'm also moving a bunch of Gigias from all over the place and a bunch of forces from my capital, this many specifically, to this province along with this guy and some of these guys. Well, specifically this guy, I guess. That should be plenty of what I need to kill this army with enough goddamn skeletons, but it's going to be a pain in the ass to script it because there's so many in here and like half of them aren't going with them. There should not be a battle in this province next turn, so I've given everybody the equipment that they need, and next turn I can script it all in this province where everybody who is there is someone who is going to be doing something useful in the battle. So we should have a bunch of casters good for summoning skeletons, a caster to cast anti-magic, not that we'll need that very much against man, but you know, probably better to have it than not have it. We also have Golvig with us in order to cast Arrowfend, which I mentioned. We'll also have Chiatze, who is just so cool. I'm not- <laughs> don't know how I feel about that name, but um... <laughs> Other than that, he seems all right. Also, he has the Scrati ability, except that he can turn into a great eagle. I don't think that these guys can do that genuinely. Gen I don't think these guys can do that generally. I think that um, that's a unique ability for this hero. But the important thing is that he's water three, air three, which means he can cast those useful air spells and he can also cast Grip of Winter. And because he has water three natively, he'll be a better option for that than our Scrati, which means that I can redirect these two Scrati to become thugs in our capital, while the rest of these Scrati become communion slaves to fuel the mega communion. So there's going to be a lot of scripting happening here next turn, which I will explain next turn once they're all in position. And I'm reasonably confident about my ability to kill that army if I can force it to take a fight. Meanwhile, my former main army is going to continue sneaking around Man's back lines. I intend to take a bunch of his territory to either force this army to redirect, which means I can chase after it with this army and attack it with both, or to just take a bunch of his territory, because why the fuck not? Like, if that's- he, he can't possibly have more than one or two of these stacks floating around, which means that I might as well cause trouble in his homeland, which means that the only other thing I have to worry about is this stack over here, which is quite small. I mean, 40 Knights of Avalon will fuck up a decent bunch of things, but I believe I can put together a communion which will deal with it. I'm summoning some more units here for siege defense so that we can hold it for a little bit longer, but the units moving in here this turn should be enough to put together a decent communion, even without wolves backing it, or potentially just to summon more stuff to defend it with. It just, it should work out okay. In fact, maybe I should try and move, uh, can he reach it? No, he can't reach it this turn. Although if I have him here, then he can reach here the turn after and help lift the siege. There's not much else to say. I'm slowly rebuilding my, my kingdom after the brutal attack from Pangaea. One useful thing to note is that 
Pangea and uh, Pelagia are now at war. Pelagia is the only real big, if very important one to get on side in a battle against Pangea because, well, the underwater nations tend to be very effective just because they're so hard to attack their homelands. So they always have a safe base from which to resupply, expand, or retreat into. Marignot is also in the process of going going to war with Pan, and uh, he and I are exchanging information and so on. I haven't told him that I'm locked into a, a six-turn NAP, but if it comes to it, I will tell him that I'm willing to break it. But only if it will guarantee in Pan's death. I am not. <laughs> I am not willing to get myself a stain on my reputation in exchange for failing to to deal with him. So I think that's all the important stuff we have to say today. Come back next turn and uh, see how well this does. I am really, really short on blood slaves at the moment, so I've got my blood searchers walking around trying to get a few more, which is a nuisance, but should be solvable fairly soon as I get more searchers online wandering around. In fact, I might even have a couple more create additional uh, blood dowsing thingies, which I don't have any more of here, but um, I don't have the slaves to spare to make them with this turn because I need all of those slaves to be used for combat. If you aren't one turn flipped by Pangaea, then by this point, as Jotunheim, you usually have such a strong blood economy that you always have a just like 50 to 100 spare slaves in your treasury every turn because you're using so many, but you're generating so many. Unfortunately, I'm new to this game and I have failed to set that up in this amount of time. And also I've spent the last like six turns recovering. So that ain't happening. But we can still get enough to fuel our important communions, and that's the important thing. Especially considering quite a few of my skeleton summoning mages who are just there to make up numbers are astrals and therefore don't need the blood slaves. They can just cast the astral communion spell instead. And that's going to be all for this turn. Well, unfortunately, we've got a pretty boring turn to talk about today, which is actually to my benefit because I've spent the entire week being unwell and the last two days having a horribly sore throat. To the point where I'd rather not be talking at all today, but um, I'm just that dedicated. Our fortress is getting the shit absolutely kicked out of it because that army is just massive. It does at least see, let us see exactly what he's got. As you can see, a huge portion of his troops are these longbowmen. If I cast Arrowfend up against this army, most of his troops will be worth, worthless. But this army of Knights of Avalon is, is pretty concerning. That could do some real damage. Although, good for, the, good for these guys for killing exactly one of them. Surprised they got any of them at all, but that's still good. He does not appear to be relying on Sacred Cavalry. I might have been incorrect about him having Sacred Cavalry, but the important thing is that we can see what his deal is, and um, we should be able to beat this. We should be able to beat this with our big communions. We just need to get some chaff up in front. We've had some unlucky events, retaken some provinces, etc. So there's a few things I need to think about this turn. Most important one is this army here. My main army that was going to march north and try and kill this stack is in position to deal with it potentially, and probably should, because this army over here is basically out of resources and needs more blood slaves. So it all comes down to the irritating game of 5D chess positioning, as always seems to happen in these in these big stack battles. Not that these are big stacks, but you know what I mean. He's clearly using that stack to seize a bunch of my territory. He's seen this army here, so I suspect that he'll move his forces from here to here. If he does, that's great for me because I'm intercepting him. He might he might suspect I'm going to do that and move it somewhere else. If he retreats to either of these provinces, that's irritating, but not the end of the world. I just have to chase him. Since I don't want to take that fight with this army because, well... <laughs> they're hurting, guys. They're, they're pretty beat up. They need, they need, they need more supplies. I don't quite have enough blood slaves to get my... Oh no, I just, I do have enough to get the communion online actually, but I don't have enough for my casters to be a part of the communion. I could put, downgrade this to just two. <sighs> okay, I'm going to do that. So I just edited out a big plan I had, but it wouldn't work. This army doesn't have enough blood slaves, even if I, even if I move this down to a two-person communion, because a two-person communion won't level up my nature casters enough that they are able to cast relief. I could fiddle with that by having my astral casters become communion slaves, but I don't really want to risk losing this this army. So instead of taking either of these castles, they're going to go and take this empty province. So it's most likely, in my opinion, that he's going to head to one of these two provinces. If he heads here, we'll head him off with the main army. If he heads here, we're going to interrupt him with a foul vapors bomb, whose job is going to be to poison the shit out of all of these guys, which may be unwise, but we're going to do it anyway. If he heads here, that's going to be irritating for me. I was intending to build a communion here to step out and move into this one so that all three of the potential locations he might move to are covered. Of course, he might just stay where he is, which is going to also be irritating. If I move into there and he moves into here, then we'll fight on the way. But if I move into here and he moves somewhere else, then I will just be chasing after him pointlessly, which is not what I want to be doing with my main army stack and might even be why this army is here to distract me into doing that. Recruitment's going apace elsewhere. Stuff's happening. Things are being done. 
We are desperately, desperately trying to improve our blood economy thanks to the stupid decision of blood Brexit, which is what I'm going to start calling that turn when Pan flipped all of my provinces at once. Once we've got enough blood going, we can become self-sustaining, but it's going to take a little while. I'm basically just ignoring this and letting him do this at this point, because I can march up there afterwards and kill his big stack afterwards. I need, I just, I have to get the resources in position first. So, as my voice slowly fades away to nothing, because as I said, I'm sick. I'm so ill. That's going to be all from this turn. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe and share. I also stream regularly on Twitch and you can find me on Twitter for updates and announcements. If you want to contribute to my continued existence, then why not donate to me on Coffee or Patreon? All of the links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching.